Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be able to join the Smart and Symposium once again. I don't need to remind you of the unprecedented times we are living in. We are cutting our dependence on Russian energy and building up resilience of the EU's energy system. On 8th of March, the Commission adopted a major new initiative, Repower EU, to make our energy system more affordable, secure and sustainable. It aims to make Europe independent from Russian fossil fuels, starting with gas, well before the end of this decade. The plan focuses on first refilling our gas stocks for next winter and diversifying our gas supplies. Second, accelerating the European Green Deal. This means transitioning to renewable gases and being more energy efficient, turning to more electrification and addressing infrastructure bottlenecks. With the measures set out by the Commission, we could already cut our dependence on Russian gas by two-thirds by next winter. It also includes further guidance for Member States to address today's high energy prices, building on our toolbox of last October. With such high energy prices, demand-side flexibility can prove to be vital to tackle the volatility of prices. This flexibility is both an extremely valuable resource for the European energy system and a significantly untapped one. While progress has been made to make use of the potential of demand-side flexibility, this progress is slow. I said this during the previous symposium one and a half years ago, and I repeat it here at the, today. More is needed to adapt the electricity system to future needs, while keeping costs down and limiting costly greed expansions. And demand-side flexibility provided by consumers across Europe can play an essential role in providing the flexibility we need. On the one hand, it can help to match demand with supply. On the other hand, it can help to reduce congestion, in particular at local level, thereby reducing investment needs. Let me give you some examples. We estimate that by 2050, demand-side flexibility from electric vehicles could provide up to 20% of total daily flexibility needs meaning the needs for matching demand and supply on a daily basis. Demand-side flexibility will be particularly valuable to reduce local congestion, with more electrification and more variable generation connected at distribution level, local congestion will increase significantly. Enabling distribution system operators to address these local network constraints by using flexibility could significantly reduce network costs. At EU level, Avoided investments at distribution level can be up to 5 billion euros per year until 2030. Now, let me put demand-side flexibility in the context of the current surge in energy prices. Demand-side flexibility and the activation of demand response will usually not result in an overall decrease in demand. Instead, it will usually lead to a shift of demand in time. Nevertheless, such a shift of demand can provide valuable benefits to the energy system and consumers. By shifting demand as a re reply to high prices, demand response can contribute to cutting peak prices in the wholesale market. It can thus help to reduce price spikes. A recent study estimates that in France, for instance, demand response activation helps to reduce the highest hourly price by 40 euros per megawatt hour. In addition to this price effect, demand response can lead to a reduction in carbon emissions, as we will need less electricity from generators using fossil fuels. Finally, if the electricity is generated outside the EU, demand response can reduce electricity imports from non-EU countries. The clean energy package adopted in 2019 contains a number of important aspects on the development of demand-side flexibility. These concern in particular its non-discriminatory access to all electricity markets and the full recognition of aggregators as market participants. Member States need to set the regulatory framework that will effectively ensure this to happen. To date, we see that a significant number of rules have not been transposed into national law. We also observe that transposition is very uneven among member states. The Smarten report comes to the same conclusion. 
I therefore urge member states to transpose these provisions into their national laws as swiftly as possible. The Commission stands ready to support member states to transpose the clean energy package into national laws and enforce the EU law as needed. Complementing the clean energy package, the Commission, together with ACER, has started working on a set of new rules to support the development of demand response and address remaining regulatory barriers. These rules are to be developed in a specific network code for demand-side flexibility or to be added in existing network codes. Alongside demand-side response, it will also look at the participation of distributed storage and distributed generation when combined with flexible demand. Last July, the Commission proposed a revision of the EU Directive on Energy Efficiency, among other European Green Deal proposals that are crucial for the 2030 decarbonisation targets. It includes enshrining the energy efficiency first principle into EU law and encourages the participation of demand-side flexibility in the energy market. The legislative proposal was complemented by a dedicated recommendation to member states and practical guidance to all decision makers later in autumn. This practical toolbox informs all decisions on energy supply and energy use about cost-efficient savings potential. One thing is to get the regulatory market framework right to support the development of demand-side flexibility. We also need to unlock investments to make the grid smarter, to improve the visibility and controllability of different connected assets. While the current crisis clearly shows the urgent need to protect consumers from excessive energy costs, they should keep their ability to react to price signals and earn revenue from it. Digital solutions are a key factor for this and allow both individual consumers and aggregators benefit from flexibility they can provide to the market. This will be one of the areas to address in the digitalization of Energy Action Plan, which the Commission is currently preparing. The Action Plan will look at measures to increase data exchanges behind the meter, that is beyond the regulated domain of system operators. In conclusion, we still have a long way to go to fully unlock the potential of demand-side flexibility and ensure the right regulatory framework across the EU. But given the expected benefits of the participation of demand-side flexibility in the electricity markets and in the context of volatile energy prices, the motivation is higher than ever. Thank you.